Fed likes to think they're playing with the thermostat. So if the house is too cold, you dial up the heat. If the house is too warm, you dial it down. Uh, my analysis says that the capital markets are a complex, critical state system. And what they're actually playing with is more like a nuclear reactor. They're moving fuel rods and control rods and neutron generators. Uh, they think they're playing with a the thermostat. They're playing with something far more dangerous. You can dial up or dial down a nuclear reactor. But if you get it a little bit wrong, you'll have a catastrophe. And in my view, what the Fed is doing with the dollar, abusing their privilege, is risking a catastrophe. And finally, in uh, the last chapter of the book, I talk about these possible outcomes. I call them the four horsemen of the dollar apocalypse. Uh, the first is fairly benign. This is a world of multiple reserve currencies. Uh, so the, right now, uh, the U.S., in, sorry, in 2000, the U.S. was 70% of global reserves. 70% of global reserves were held in U.S. dollars. Today, that number is about 60%. We've come down 10%. Imagine that number continuing to drop until it's maybe 45 or 40. The euro comes up in 25 to 35. The yuan comes in for 5% or so. And we sort of have this world of, there's nobody's the boss. We all just take each other's currencies, and there's plenty of assets, and they're all good reserve currencies. Sort of a kumbaya solution. Um, I uh, think that the problem with this, and uh, Barry Eichen Green's a leading scholar on this point, advocate, and points out that this did happen in the 1920s where the dollar and sterling shared center stage. The problem is then we were on the gold standard. Today we're not. There's no anchor. Uh, and I, I think instead of one central bank behaving badly, you'd have five or six. So I don't see that as a stable solution at all. Uh, the second solution, the one favored by elites, and when I use the word elites, uh, I'm not talking about deep, dark conspiracies. I'm talking about finance ministers, central bankers, uh, the folks you bump into if you're on the street in Davos tonight, um, and, uh, and a lot of intellectuals, uh, is the SDR. That's the special drawing right. Everyone knows that the Fed has a printing press. They can print dollars. The IMF has a printing press, too. They can print uh, SDRs hand them out to their members. Uh, they're not backed by anything. Uh, the next time there's a financial panic, and I expect one um, sooner than later, you know, sometime in the next few years at the, at the rate we're going, uh, it will be bigger than the Fed. The Fed will not be able to reliquify the world as it did do in 2008. Uh, what you'll see instead is the IMF will reliquify re the world with SDRs. Um, so that's, that's coming. Again, it's not guesswork. Uh, there's, there's a paper on the IMF website, spells out a 10-year plan. Uh, to issue SDRs right down to uh, names of uh, potential buyers, potential sellers, uh, investable assets, dealers, uh, a calendar of issuance per year, and a clearing and settlement mechanism. So it's not my blueprint, it's the IMF, so you can go look it up. It's mentioned in the book. Um, third solution is a gold standard, um, which is a highly stabilizing. I recommend it be studied. The euro was studied for 10 years before the euro actually was issued. Uh, obviously, the, that probably wasn't long enough, but uh, the point is uh, you don't go to a gold standard overnight. Uh, there's some key issues you've got to wrestle with. One is um, uh, if every gold standard is a ratio of paper to gold, how much paper do we count? Is it M0, M1, M2? These are very different numbers. Uh, the second thing is what's the gold backing? You talk to the gold bugs, they'll say it's 100% or nothing because we can't trust the government. Uh, but historically, that's not true. England ran a gold standard very successfully in the 19th century with about 20% gold backing for the currency. In the United States, historically, when we run the gold standard, we had about 40% gold backing. So if you have enough to stand up to the market, you don't need 100%. Third issue, who's in the club? Is it just the U.S.? I think that's unlikely because we'd have the only currency anybody wanted. So when you include China and uh, Europe, you get different results. China has four times our money supply, but only one-eighth the gold. We have 8,000 tons, they have 1,000 tons. So you dilute the gold pool when you bring them in. Uh, what the point is, depending on how you pick those variables, money supply, backing, and membership, you get very different results for the implied price of gold, and they're all in the book. Uh, the low end of the range, $3,000 an ounce. At the high end of the range, if you take M2 with ECB China and the United States with 100% backing, which I don't recommend, if you do that, it comes to $44,000 an ounce. So uh, my estimate is $7,000 an ounce. I see that. Uh, to me, that's not some wild guess to get you know, a headline or whatever. It's just it's eighth grade math. Just look at the amount of paper money and the amount of gold and make some reasonable assumptions, and that's, that's what you get to. My fourth solution, I'll finish up in one minute, promise, is uh, uh, not a solution. My fourth scenario is chaos. Um, I actually think this is the most likely uh, because of human nature. I think. Combination of denial, wishful thinking, 
um, political expediency, short-termism, and a failure to understand the statistical properties of risk in complex systems uh, may lead to this, in which case it's not the end of the world. You'll, just, uh, you'll see the president, maybe this president or another, on TV using uh, dictatorial powers, which are the law, the International Emergency Economic Powers Act of 1977, gives the president, I think rightly so, dictatorial powers in an economic emergency. Uh, he would be able to do a host of things. Uh, I suggest uh, seizing the European gold that's downtown, sending out the Palisades, uh, the Taconic Parkway to West Point. Uh, it's actually most of our gold is in West Point, not Fort Knox. Um, freezing the uh, Chinese treasury bonds, not stealing them, but just saying, sorry, we'll, we'll pay as agreed, but you can't trade them or cash them in. Uh, and closing exchanges until further notice, and then studying the gold standard. <laughs>